Like and subscribe, The Facts Drone. Why Noah Lyles won 100 meter gold, despite opponent crossing line first. Noah Lyles just won arguably the greatest 100 meter final ever. With a time of 9.79 seconds, he beat Jamaica's Kishane Thompson, who also ran a 9.79 seconds, by 0.005 seconds. Lyles wasn't the only American on the podium either, with his compatriot Fred Curley claiming bronze and finishing just 0.02 seconds behind the Olympic champion. Given how close the finish was, images and clips of the athletes crossing the line have gone viral. In those photos and videos, some have noticed that Lyles wasn't necessarily the first person to have a body part cross the line. Thompson and Curley both had one of their feet cross the line before Lyles, leaving many fans confused as to why the world champion won Olympic gold. The ending of the 100 meter at Paris Olympics. But as former NFL player Emmanuel Aiko explained in a post on X, formerly Twitter, it is not about whose foot crosses the line first, it is about which torso is first to the line. That was the reason Lyles became the Olympic champion. As Aiko states in his post, Noah leans with his chest, while Thompson subtly concaves his chest. A subtle change in body position, which potentially cost Thompson Olympic gold. If the final result was to be determined by whoever's foot crossed the line first, it seems the USA still would have had gold, as it looks as if Curly's orange shoe crossed the line before Thompson's white boot. But it has always been the way in athletics that the torso crossing the line marks the end of the race, and every runner has always known this. So, Thompson will be making no excuses and will know that his dip at the end should perhaps have been executed better. The Jamaican, who was the favorite heading into the final, didn't have his best finish, but he did lead the race for most of the 100m distance. That shouldn't take away from Lyle's epic comeback, however. After 30 minutes, the American was in last place, with Thompson leading the way, but of course, by the end it was Lyles who had taken the win thanks to an amazing finish from the American superstar. In his analysis of the race, four-time Olympic gold medalist Michael Johnson said Thompson absolutely tightened up at the end of that race, a result of a lack of championship experience, which was the only one thing that put a little bit of doubt about him. Johnson was also sure to praise Lyles as well, highlighting how the 100-meter champion is a great 200-meter runner with great speed and endurance which would have been a big reason he was able to edge out Johnson at the line. Fastest 100-meter race of all time. Men's 100-meter final. The race might not have seen Usain Bolt's records beaten, but it was still the fastest race of all time. In the final, all eight of the competitors ran under 10 seconds, the first time eight men have done so in a wind-legal race. Along with this, a world record was set for fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth place. Oblique Seville finished in last place, but was still just 0.12 seconds off of Lyle's winning time, showing how high quality this 100-meter final was. The tightness of this race showed more than ever how crucial a good finish is, and how important it is to get the torso over the line before anything else. Because for Noah Lyles, that vital dip at the line is what got him Olympic gold. It was unveiled that Noah Lyles did in fact win, with a finishing time of 9.784 seconds, defeating Thompson who ran his time of 9.789. This tiny speck of time is significantly faster than anything that can be distinguished with a human eye. In fact, five one thousandths of a second is the equivalent to the period of time of a single sound wave frequency. So this was easily the closest finish in men's 100 history in the Olympic Games. This 100 meter victory left many people speechless as many had either Keyshane Thompson or Oblique Seville from Jamaica as the eventual winners. But there was something else in this race that many people currently do not know about that might make this performance from Noah Lyles the single most impressive 100-meter gold medal in Olympic history. This is how Noah Lyles won this year's Olympics. Here are the overall split times of every athlete in the field through the opening 40 meters of this year's Olympic final. Now, these numbers might not mean much to you at this point, but upon closer inspection, we see something quite amazing. Through this opening 40, Noah Lyles split a time of 4.76 seconds, which in a bizarre twist to the end, actually put him in dead last at this point. By the 40 meter point in any race, being eighth out of eight is basically a death sentence for anyone looking to win, especially in a global championship, 
and compared to previous times that NOAA has already run, a 4.76 split is still a decent amount slower than what he's capable of. However, from 40 meters to 60, he actually went from 8th all the way up to 3rd, achieving 10 meter splits of 0.85, followed by a speedy clocking of 0.83. At this point of the race, Noah was already achieving speeds in excess of 12 meters per second, and this put him right at 6.44 seconds through the 60 meter interval, which is right around his personal record time of 6.43. And even though he was already up to third place, he still had a decent amount of distance behind the leaders, as both Fred Curley and K. Shane Thompson split 60 meter times of 6.41, which was the exact time that Christian Coleman ran to win this year's indoor 60 meter worlds. Now before we get to Noah's final 40, which was certainly extraordinary, I wanted to point out that Fred Curley's split here of 6.41 was 0.14 seconds faster than his current personal record for the indoor 60, which stands at 6.55 seconds. So Curley's opening stage here was absolutely off the charts for him. But back to the gold medalist. For this final 40, Noah needed arguably the greatest close of his career to pull off this win. And somehow, against all odds, that is exactly what he did. From 60 meters to the finish, Noah split 10 meter interval times of 0 0.82, 0 0.83, 0 0.84 seconds, and 0 0.86 which equates to a final 40 meters of 3.35. Noah's clocking of 9.79 seconds makes him one of only 13 athletes in the history of the men's 100 meters to break 9.80. But another very interesting aspect of this 100 meter dash is the reaction times of every single athlete. Now here are the reaction times of this men's 100, ranked from the fastest all the way down to the slowest. As you can see, Fred Curley got a crazy fast start, nearly getting as low as you can go before the race has to be called back. But all the way down at the very bottom, with the slowest reaction time tied with Litzy Litaboho, was Noah Lyles at 0.178. Now this wasn't a super, super slow reaction from Lyles. 0.17 is somewhat okay. But in the past, he has regularly reacted with times around 0.13 to 0.14. So if Noah had but a small improvement on his reaction of about three to four one hundredths of a second, his times would have dropped into historic territory. It is crazy to think that with a normal reaction time for Noah, he would have jumped into the top six or seven athletes in the history of the 100. But this kind of timing and precise racing execution comes with the territory when you're at the top of the world. There is no denying that Noah's 100 victory has silenced a lot of haters online. And what is also another crazy aspect of this race is the continued debate on whether or not Noah is in fact the fastest man in the world. Now with this Olympic title, Noah has ended a 20-year drought of gold medals for an American athlete in this event. But what is also quite unbelievable about this race was what happened behind both Keyshane and Noah. Statistically speaking, this race was the deepest and fastest 100-meter dash not just in Olympic history, but of all time. It did fall short in terms of the single fastest times ever achieved, as that title goes to the 2009 World Finals with Usain Bolt. But as far as depth goes, this race was it. Finishing all the way back in eighth was Oblique Seville in 9.91, which was certainly a disappointment as he clocked 9.81 in the semis. So had he run to his actual abilities, he probably would have gotten a medal. But using the top seven athletes as a measure here, this was the first time that seven or more athletes ever clocked times under 9.9 .9 in the same race. The closest that any 100 meter race has ever come to this kind of depth was the 2012 Olympic finals, where a total of four athletes ran under 9.90. So to see that kind of depth doubled is honestly shocking. Now the same thing actually happened in 2023, where four athletes also ran under 9.90, so perhaps last season's finals was a foreshadowing moment to the greatness that would take place this season. But this 2024 Olympic final was just different, and I also wanted to give a huge, huge shout out to Akane Sambine from South Africa, whose time of 9.82 seconds was a new national record, and it was also certainly a painful finish in fourth. For years and years, Sambine has placed either fourth or fifth in global finals, 
And sadly, he still has yet to win an individual medal in a global championship. And looking closer at 9.82, this would have earned a medal in every other Olympic or world championship final, except for the 2012 Olympic Games. So for Akane, I just wanted to say congratulations on a speedy race, a national record, and also hopefully 2025 will be your year. Now I wanna hear from all of you. What do you take away from Noah's performance here? What do you think about this 9.79? And do you think that faster times will be achieved in 2024? Thanks. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for daily updates.